Hey guys, what's up? Today we're going to talk about Georgia Tech's algorithms class as part of their online master's program. So I took the class and it was really hard, but I'm here to walk you through it. So let's get started. All right, today we're going to talk about Georgia Tech's graduate algorithms class. So what I'm going to do is first give you my best attempt at an unbiased look at the class. What is it like? What kind of homeworks do you have? How many and such? And then at the end of the video, I'm going to give you my honest opinion and just like advice for if you're trying to decide whether or not to take the class. So what is graduate algorithms? Well, algorithms is a study of getting computers to do what you want them to do faster and more efficiently. So in this class, you have eight homeworks, um, three coding projects, and three exams. So the first homework that you do is basically a self-assessment on three topics, big O notation, graph theory, and Boolean logic. It's not graded, so it's basically just a self-assessment of how well you know these topics uh, before you dive into them for later homeworks. All right, so homework one is dynamic programming. So this is an example problem. I'm not taking the exact questions from the homework, but it's a similar idea. It's called edit distance. So let's say you have two strings and you're trying to figure out how close are they to each other. One way of doing this is called edit distance, where you figure out what letters you can replace insert or remove and the fast way to solve this is using dynamic programming where you make a table like this where each word is on one side of the table and you start by breaking the problem down into smaller pieces so you compare just the first letter to the first letter are those the same yes that means they have a zero edit distance from each other and then you just keep going filling out the table one by one it turns out this is much faster than if you were to recursively figure out this problem because you're saving results from previous iterations and building upon that. All right, so number two, homework, graphs and logarithmic scale and stuff. So imagine you're a traveling salesman and you have to visit X number of cities. What is the fastest path between all those cities? And this is an interesting problem because even with today's fastest computers, by slowly incrementing the number of cities, the speed and time at which it takes to do the problem increases exponentially. And so you'll see that in this little GIF here, 12 cities takes like 60 seconds, whereas eight cities took like one second or something. And it's a really interesting problem because there is no way to truly solve it. You have to make approximations. All right, homework number three. So it's called Fast Fourier Transform. Basically what that lets you do is break apart things like sound, electric signals, etc., into their original pieces. So imagine you have a smoothie and you're trying to figure out what ingredients went into it. If you were to plug that into the fast Fourier transform, out you would get the original ingredients in all of their exact amounts. So you're basically like undoing that smoothie, like control Z or something. And it's interesting because a lot of applications use this. Okay, homework five. This one is basically when you have two things called minimum spanning trees. They're graphs where there's no extra edges in the graph, but you can still access all the nodes. If you have two of those, what is the best way to like merge them into one big MST with no duplicate edges? Homework, homework number six is modular math and RSA. So RSA is an encryption algorithm and it lets you basically keep things secret and it works with modular arithmetic. So this is an example. And it's interesting because even with today's fastest computers, um, when you make this RSA algorithm work correctly, it's impossible to crack basically unless they just get a super lucky shot in the dark and what it comes down to is prime numbers so that's actually really interesting to learn about how that all works okay now we get into the coding projects um, so the first project is dynamic programming basically it's taking like Fibonacci numbers and instead of doing this recursively you do it in a dynamic programming way um, in this project what you're actually solving is called the knapsack problem which is like you break into a store and you're trying to find out all the most valuable items but you only have a knapsack that's so large what are the best items to take to maximize your uh, like lucrative steal or whatever okay so project two is minimum spanning tree they give you this boilerplate code that you fill in a couple of methods and you're gonna implement Kruskal's algorithm to find the minimum spanning tree of a graph and then exams okay so there are two free response questions per exam basically it's just a prompt followed by your input uh, to like write out the algorithm that satisfies the prompt alright so now we're getting to the juicy part this is my personal opinion on the class 
So I think this class content is actually really cool. Um, you learn a lot of interesting things, and I feel like it's pretty relevant to like today's computer programming world. The thing I think about is this class relies too much on pseudocode. So for the homeworks up above, you do that all in pseudocode. So you're writing this these algorithms in like text format. So there's a lot of room for like interpretation errors or like just kind of hard to communicate ideas across with pseudocode exactly. I think this class could really benefit from some real code, like more emphasis on the real code. And why do I think that's great? One, it basically eliminates the ambiguity between the students and the TAs when trying to figure out certain things that maybe students wrote in their pseudocode that the TAs don't understand or vice versa. And it's a lot easier to grade for the TAs because you can write auto graders, you can actually implement things and check that if it works or if it doesn't work. There's no interpretation involved. When you take an algorithm to production to use it, what are you using it in? Are you using it in pseudocode or are you writing it in real code? You're writing it in real code. So I would say the more valuable option is to put more weight into real code in this class. So now you may be wondering, should you take this class? Well, here's my advice. Uh, if you're doing this master's for like your personal benefit and you just want to learn something new, I think the best thing would be to watch this class's lectures videos. Like those are really good. I feel like there's a lot of great content in there. If you are doing your master's to perform well in like academia, you're into writing papers, you want to be like published and all that. Like I think this class could probably be a good option. Um, it's very rigorous in that, in that sense. And then lastly, like if you're doing your master's to get your degree, I would suggest taking the intelligence, interactive intelligence route and skipping this class. Um, and just maybe watching the lecture videos, I feel like that's the best part of this class. All right, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe. I make more of these as I go along the program. I'm almost done. I'm on to my last class this semester. So hit that subscribe button for a final grand finale video. Thank you.